If you're new to real estate, what's the most important thing to do when you start? If you're a new or experienced estate agent, what are the 10 most important income producing activities you should be focusing on? How can you get your sellers to list their properties at a price that will sell? How can your comparative market analysis help you to get the mandate? For the answer to these and other questions, Karat van Rensburg, a real estate trainer, motivational speaker, as well as a coach, will answer all of them in today's video training interview. I'm Deontay Blanche, and welcome to video training interviews. And welcome back. It's Deontay Blanche with Gerrit van Rensburg, real estate uh, trainer, coach, and motivational speaker. Gerrit, welcome to VD Trainer Interviews. Thank you very much, Dion. Wonderful to be here. It's great to have you here. Um, as I said to you before, you know, you and I have been uh, dancing around the issue almost. I've known about you and people have spoken to me about you for quite a long time now. So I'm glad that we finally got the opportunity to, to meet and to talk to each other. Thanks, Dion. I think you're more famous than me at the moment. So yeah, it's, um, the honor is all mine. Gerard, let's get right into it. You know, um, as a real estate trainer, um, you obviously work specifically, uh, I know that you work countrywide and you actually got a, a, another trainer on your team now to, to, to cover more of the country. But before we get into all of that, maybe you can just tell our viewers, you know, who you are and how you got into uh, real estate and real estate training. Sure. Thank you, Dion. Um, I'm actually an educator ever since I've left school. I've studied teaching for two years at the Normal College in Pretoria. And my, my career just took me in totally different directions. I went into banking, I've worked for the insurance industry. Mm. And then in 1997, I've ended up working for a conveyancing firm as a, what they call today a, a PRO. Um, and at that time, as I was dealing with estate agents, I thought let me qualify myself as an estate agent because the aim was to deliver good service and advice to, to our clients at that time. And that's when the, the bug bit me. And then I've joined real estate formally in, in August 2000. Um, joined a, a national brand um, that later on became an international brand. And I've tried to, to, to cover as much as I possibly could in the estate agency where I was working at that time. Um, I've moved around from, from Johannesburg to, to, to Nysa and then from Nysa to Jeffreys Bay and then back to Johannesburg and I've taken on a position as a national training manager for the um, estate agency and the company in South Africa, which I've really enjoyed. But I at some point felt that I needed more experience and more training and more skill myself. So I went back into to real estate as a sales manager and later on as a principal myself. And uh, as I was also at that time a facilitator of level four and five qualifications, I decided, well, this is the best time for me to start what I really enjoy, which is educating people. Mm and sharing my knowledge and my experience which I've had in the industry that made me quite successful mm. with people who want to be as successful and more in the future. Mm. That's how it all happened. Yeah, I think you're being quite humble now. From what I know and what I've seen, you were actually quite successful in property yourself, you know, while you were still working as a property professional. You know, I was very blessed. Um, I, I think I, I found my calling when I joined real estate. I think that's exactly what I was supposed to do. Um, I was working in a very good market at that time as well, so one can, can, I can't, cannot just take the, um, the, the results and the success for myself. It was a good market. 2000, 2005 was the best market one could possibly work in as an estate agent. But the benefit for me in working in a market like that is the, the amount of experience that you gain with the amount of, amount of activity that actually happens in the marketplace. I feel very sorry for agents that has come into the market in 2008 and 2009 where there was so little activity because the less the activity from the market, the less the opportunity for you to experience and learn. So I, I think the biggest gain I've had from working at that time was the amount of learning and the amount of skills and the amount of experience I've gained from the market as it happened at that time. Yeah. But yes, I was very successful and I, I would still one day perhaps repeat the same success um, if ever I get to that point. Currently it's just for me sharing what my experience was with the people in the market. Now, as a successful real estate agent, you know, some people would say that real estate is an art and some would say that it's a science. Um, what do you think? You know, what do you think makes certain people successful in real estate and, and others less successful? 
like anything in life, it, it's a process, you know, and every, 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 every kind of job or career has a specific process that needs to be followed. And the more successful you become in following the process, the better your chances of having good results. Mm. The nice thing also in following the process is you can always backtrack and see where did you go wrong. If you don't know how you got to an end result, it's very difficult to repeat that same um, result in the future. So it's very important that you, you have a process that you work um, and anybody can follow a process. You know, as long as you are disciplined and you are committed to the process, um, and, and at least as when you follow a process that you know have been proven to work, then it's much easier for you to duplicate your results uh, and the success you have in the future. So it's all about process. Mm. You would then say, therefore, that um, it, it, it's not so much an art. It really is something that you can learn. It's a skill almost that you can learn yes. and become successful at it. And I have to agree with you there. Uh, we see it in our own you know, uh, company as well. Um, we get completely new people in that are fresh to the industry, completely green. And, yes. And once they acquire the skills and the mindset and the training, they do become successful. So I can only agree with you there. Yes. And at you, um, you do a lot of training um, around the country, especially I know in the Western Cape, uh, for, for especially new estate agents. That's right. What would you say are some of the most important things that are complete newbie or, or a rookie as we call them to the industry uh, need to do in his or her first, first few months, let's say the first 90 days? I would say research, you know, um, it's, it's actually a very good time for a new entrant when he starts, you know, they may only operate as an estate agent once the FFC has been issued by the EAB. That's right. So th this creates the perfect opportunity for them to do research, you know, no new business owner can go into a business without doing market research first. So uh, my advice to all these newcomers is to spend this time and um, investigate collect information. The more information you can collect about the area in which you plan to work, the better your chances of, of taking off um, at, at a very fast speed. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much to be collected, you know, one needs to know turnover in the area, you know, is, is this area that you, we, in which you plan to work, does it have a good enough turnover for you and the company to survive mm -hmm. when making sales? Um, is they, um, who are your competition, you know, and what do they do, you know, what, what will you be up against in the marketplace when you start operating as an estate agent? What service offering will you have to offer to the people and how will this be different from the existing agents in the marketplace? What is your own value offering? What have you to offer to the industry and to the people that you'll be dealing with? So there's a lot to be researched. Mm -hmm. And this time, as I say, if, if, if they spend this wisely, you know, getting started from there will be a piece of cake. I hear you. Now, you said that, that a lot of your success came during the, the, the time when you know, uh, the property market was literally running away almost. It was 2004 to 2007. Uh, it, it was an up or a, a, a seller's market at the time, so to speak. Now, what do you think has changed now? Uh, other than the obvious thing, but what what do you, what I'm actually asking is what do real estate agents these days have to do differently to be able to make it or to survive? I think they need to go back to basics. I'll be very honest with you. My experience is that um, in, in the good markets, um, even though it was a, a, a fantastic market and we, one could possibly sell anything, the thing is, the difference is the competition was just so much higher at that time. Of course. There were so many estate agents in the marketplace because of the good market that for you to close a sole mandate or to make a sale, that was really um, quite an achievement because of all the competition. Yeah. Um, Sorry, Gerrit, for interrupting. So what you're sure. saying is that actually that market also had its own challenges. It did. Oh, it did. Trust me. Um, I remember that you'd stand up against 9, 10, 11 estate agents at any given time when you go into to negotiate a sole mandate with a potential seller. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was a cutthroat situation. So that was the bad part about the good market. Now we're having a, a better part of, about the bad market where there aren't as many agents that we are competing with, but we still need to stick to the basics. Mm -hmm. Real estate hasn't changed. The market has changed. You know, um, we, we had a lot of outside influences to the real estate industry, the global recession, interest rates, even though it's low today, the bank's lending criteria, so many laws and legalities that came into place that, that makes it more and more difficult for estate agents to achieve as fast as we may have had in the past. But real estate is still the same. People will still buy from the best agent, the person that they know, they like and trust and know they are competent to do the job. 
So it's just a matter of we need, need to start demonstrating again who we are and what do we have to offer to potential buyers and sellers in the real estate. Mm. And that's back to basics. Now, if, just in continuance of, of this specific topic, um, if you go back to basics, I know that one of the things that you teach is the necessity for a, for a professional uh, or a property professional to have a proper listing presentation. Yes. Can you to tell us a little, bit, a little bit more about that? You know, the listing in, um, presentation is like going for a job interview. Um, mm. So, so the, first of all, the impression that you need to make on this potential client of yours must be absolutely as if you really want this job. And you need to create that impression that you want this job. So first of all, you need to be very well prepared as if you are going for a job interview. You need to know your work. You need to be having all the tools and information that you may need with you. Um, because you only have this one chance with the seller. Mm. Um, at the end of the day, he will only make the selling decision with you once he finds that he knows you, like you, trust you and see you are competent. And you only have this half an hour to an hour, hour and a half to demonstrate all of this. Yes. So you need to be prepared, you need to be skilled, you need to be well revised and well exercised mm. before you go in. Uh, I see too often agents just go in in true blue hoping that they can make a difference with a big smile. The time has changed. A big smile on its own is not just enough for a seller. Yes. The educated seller that we're dealing with today needs more than just a beautiful smile. <laughs> yeah, a beautiful smile is important, but it's not all of it. It's not all of it. No, it's not. <laughs> now, in our experience, you know, we've been in, 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 in property for, for very long, both of us now. Um, overpriced properties just don't sell. Yes. We know that. Yes. What would you say to, to a new estate agent or maybe even a, an experienced estate agent about the importance of pricing? It all starts with pricing. You can take any product and put it on the market at any price. If the price is not right, not just does it not sell, it also chases away any potential buyer that you may have found for your product. It's the same with real estate. Yeah. Um, I, I often believe that estate agents had a huge influence in the way that the market is treating the estate agents at this point in time. I By not agree. doing proper... I by not pro doing proper competitive market analysis on clients' properties um, opens yourself up for pricing or allowing the seller to choose the incorrect price. Remember, as estate agents, we can't dictate the price that the seller should choose. We can only assist the seller in choosing the right price. That when he chooses a price, he's choosing a price that will attract buyers because we can perform any marketing plan. If the price is not right, the marketing plan will be a failure. Exactly. So it's our, our time and money that we'll be investigating in executing the marketing plan. Getting him to choose the price right is very important. But then again, he will only make that decision once we have put all the information to him out on the table. Mm -hmm. And the only advice I can say is make sure that he doesn't price the property in the fail to sell category. Yes. And there are many of those as examples that we can use in our CMA to convince the seller not to list his property in that price range. But it's again, you know, how you provide the evidence mm -hmm. that his property may fall in that fail to sell category then. Yeah, because essentially what you're saying is that with your comparative market analysis, pricing a property, that's the part of real estate that's absolutely not an art. That's a no. science. There's a, it is real a science. market value. Absolutely, and the one amazing thing is we, all estate agents are supposed to use exactly the same information to price a property. Um, and still you find agents that they find different value on property than another agent. It's not possible. We all work with the actives, the sold, and the expired information in the area. And that's the information that we use to, cor to correctly price a property. Right. So if all agents have access to that information, my question is always, how is it possible that one agent can price the property at a different value than another estate agent? I hear you. I think what you said is so true in the sense that estate agents have a lot to do or have done a lot to, to, to create the impression unfortunately uh, in the market sometimes of some estate agents these days. I think yes. many estate agents in the past allowed themselves to become order takers for, for sellers. Yes. In other words, they would go to the seller and they would take the order as he gives it to them uh, without giving any professional input you know, into the price and the sellability of the property. So yeah, I think we've got to blame ourselves also. Uh, if there's a perception now that estate agents are unprofessional and all of that. And luckily we can also change it. If we cause it, we can change it. 
Yes. Sorry. Another important thing I just want to mention, I think it's important for the agent also to know more than the client. Often you find that the homeowner in the area knows more about the area and knows more about the active sold and expired listings in the area than the agent himself. Yes. Now that leaves itself open you know, for a lot of discussion. Uh, this, the seller then will immediately know that he knows more than the agent and why would he employ a, an agent on sold manet if he feels that he knows more about the area than exactly. the agent himself. Exactly, exactly. And I just want to move on to something else. Uh, you and I have spoken before. I know that one of the things you teach also is uh, something that can be applicable to estate agents, but also to entrepreneurs in general. Uh, with your your whole uh, topic about income-producing activities, and and we don't have a lot of time here now. But would you care to to tell our viewers just what your uh, income-producing activities are? I'd like to do that. Thank you so much. The first thing is to identify your prospects. Now, every day when you start working, you must be able to identify a prospect. A prospect is a potential source of income. And if you think about it, every person that you possibly meet during that course of the day is a potential source of income. The second um, activity is once I've identified the people that may be potential sources of income is to prospect them. Prospect means making contact. But it's not just making contact, it's contact with the purpose to generate future business from. So when I make contact, I use different techniques. It can be the face-to-face -face technique, which will always be the most popular one. The second one can be a, a telephonic conversation or an email that I send to a potential prospect or I can um, send an SMS or I can find this person or connect with this person on social media platforms and then lastly um, is the print media. Print media is very unpopular as we, you and I have discussed in the past purely for the purpose people don't like receiving junk mail anymore and they throw the stuff away but again the purpose for making contact is to actually get an appointment. Real estate can only be done in people's lounges where possible and Skype has become a fantastic tool to use for an appointment as well as you and I are having this afternoon. Mm -hmm. So an appointment is not just in the lounge, it is face to face. Mm -hmm. I need to meet with this person to determine his needs and his wants and to find solutions for his needs and wants which I will come back and give him the solutions of. You know, um, very important also, um, it's not possible for, for, for all agents to just have a solution right there and then. Your client expects you to go do some research first and then come back with a proper solution, not just one that has been put together in a few seconds time in front of him. They often want you to just go back, come back with a proper solution. So That's right. prospecting was for the purpose of getting the listing appointment. The listing appointment is to determine needs and wants and to discover or to find a, a reason for you to find solutions. Then we come back and we do the price and marketing presentation. Our price and marketing presentation is the solution that he was looking for. That's right. Helping him and guiding him in choosing the right price and also offering our marketing plan as a solution to him to help him find a buyer or a tenant as quickly as possible. The art is in the presentation and that's where skill and knowledge and expertise comes in very handy. Yes. It's how you present your CMA and how you present your marketing plan that makes the difference. Now the purpose for presenting the CMA and marketing plan is purely and purely to get a sole and exclusive mandate where possible. Right. We all know that that is the first price of real estate. There's always a second price, which is the sole mandate, and then there's the third price, which is just a normal mandate. But we all know that motivated agents work far harder and motivated on a transaction if they have the sole and exclusive mandate. Of course. There's a lot of benefit for the seller also when giving the sole and exclusive mandate. And again, knowledge about the benefits of a sole and exclusive mandate comes in quite handy. Once I have the mandate, it's only now that I am actually legally um, uh, allowed to perform a marketing plan on the property. The code of conduct makes it very clear that no estate agent shall offer any property for sale or to let without a mandate from the seller. Now I know the agents struggle getting the mandates in writing but one thing is very important we must indicate to the sellers that the mandate is not with the agent the mandate is with the company that is giving the mandate to and for that reason the company needs to keep proper record of that the fact that the mandate was given. But nevertheless having the mandate I can now start performing my marketing activities. The more successful I am in executing my marketing plan, 
the better my chances of generating more buyers than any other estate agent in the area. I often welcome the activities of other agents in the area as well, especially if they're very active estate agents with lots of marketing activities because we all generate buyers to the area. The more buyers we can generate to the area, the better our chances of being more successful. Yes, and this time reminds me of another thing. I think it's very often the areas where there's not much happening is because the agents often aren't as act active as they're supposed to be. Because it's essentially all that activity. You, you start, sorry, Harith, essentially you start by marketing the area and then yes. only can you start marketing your home in that area. Absolutely. Yeah. And imagine now if the prices in the area are all incorrect. We are chasing away the buyers and the only way to attract the buyers back to the area is by getting the prices right. So again, it all starts with price. Yes. The more successful I am in generating buyers, the better my chances of closing a sale um, and getting an offer, getting an offer, closing the sale. Once I've closed the sale, I, I will be earning an income. And my last activity is by keeping regular contact with past and existing clients. It's much easier for me to identify a future prospect in the future. So it, it's, it's working all of this on a, a consistent basis. You know, there's only three activities that you can actually plan as an estate agent, which is identification of the prospects and prospecting and keeping regular contact. Mm -hmm. The other seven activities are all results of successfully doing the first three, which I've just mentioned. Mm -hmm. yeah, this, is, this is great stuff. I think, you know, anybody watching this, if, if you're in property, then, you know, this is gold. This is the way you go about to actually build a sustainable business for yourself and property, even in this market. Yes. Yeah. Well, I hope it will add value to them as much as it had to me and my, my students at the moment. Fantastic. just want to ask you a few more things um, around, uh, you know, the changing landscape of, of real estate. Uh, you mentioned briefly before now um, social media with Facebook and all, and all that. What would you say to that? How do you think all of those things changed uh, real estate? I think it's already changed the industry. Um, if you think how difficult it has become for people to get access into people's lives. You know, in the past, I remember when I started as an agent, uh, the properties had very low walls in front of them, uh, very small docks, no electric fencing, very few intercom systems. It was easy for me to just knock on a door and be invited. Crime was very, very little at that point in time as well, so people would easily invite a stranger into their homes. Nowadays, people have become more private. They don't invite strangers into their lives as easily. And people want to make a decision before they invite you into their lives. Do they know you, like you, trust you, and see that you are competent? So we use social media for that purpose, mm. to promote ourselves, promote our services, promote our businesses, get the people to know us, like us, and trust us, hoping that in the future, if they consider choosing an estate agent, they would choose me because they may know me, like me, more than they like the other mm. person. So but it's become very important not just to promote ourselves but definitely also to promote our services and our products and it goes far beyond that it's it's getting to to know your clients very well as well and 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 to to, to be friends with them um, friends today are different from friends years ago but we're still friends that's right yeah i think it social media in a sense has changed the landscape it made it almost easier you know it made it easier or at least it played the le uh, level the playing field yes. um, you can market yourself and your business now on the same basis almost as these bigger players in the market maybe. Uh, and you can reach the same buyers and sellers because they're also on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and wherever else. Yes. You know, an estate agency is only as good as the people that work for the estate agency. So one should never fear the big, bigger groups or the bigger estate agencies in a specific area. I have seen in many, many areas that even the smaller agencies um, do, do far better than some of the bigger agencies. Right. And it's purely because of the amount of activity and the level of activity of those agents that makes the difference. I hear you. Huh, this is usually the time when I just say to anybody watching this who have not subscribed to, to VD Trainer, then what on earth is wrong with you? Subscribe immediately. We get great guys in like her to talk to, to, to you about topics that, that lie close to the art and, and that will really help you in your business as a real estate agent or an entrepreneur. And just on to what you are doing, what, what are you busy with at this stage? You know, what is it that you do now? 
I am at the moment, moment in the office doing administration today. It's something I hate with a passion. Um, you know, as, as an estate agent, uh, we all hate administration, but it's a very important part of my business. I'm preparing for a, for a management workshop tomorrow at AISA again in the Western Cape. Okay. And I also have a, a few upcoming training events in Gauteng and in the Western Cape specifically, which I need to prepare for. Um, and then also I do a lot of coaching for individual agents and um, selected agents that need coaching yes. and um, that's what I keep myself busy. That's my normal day nine to five. So where can our viewers, if they watch this now and they want to get in touch with you, where can they reach you? They can perhaps find me on my website www.bowtiesolutions.org or on my blog www.bestrealestatetraining.co.za or well, they can find me on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, The Real Estate Doctor, um, or they can just contact me, 0823759343. So you, you do practice what you preach. You are everywhere. <laughs> I try to be, Dion, like you. <laughs> yes. It's the way the world works these days. <laughs> Absolutely. Gerard, this was fantastic. Thank you very much. I'm sure anybody watching this will get a lot of value from this interview with you. I thank you for the opportunity and I just want to wish everyone a happy Easter and a happy time and you know um, it's all about making good income for yourselves you know no, don't waste your time and um, tackle the, the bull by its horns and, and, and do what you need to do and whatever you do do well. I like that. Harad, until we speak again, eh? thank you very much. Thank you very much Dion as well. Keep well.